Hi, this is kind of a crappy video. Yes, this video is dealing with poo. In our first segment, Franny replaces the Joker valve, and that's no joke, haha. <laughs> Let's check out what a Joker valve is and what it does. We're in one of the guest heads. This one happens to be the starboard forward head. And we've got a little issue with this potty. And actually, I think we have the same issue with the other potty as well. And the problem is that once you flush it, there's a big tank. It's actually in the wall over here, right up in there. It's a little hard to see, but there's a, there's a big black water tank right behind that panel. And we have an electric pump here, and it has to pump the the fun stuff in the bowl all the way up to the top of that tank and drop it in and that's the way it works. Well the problem is, you, as you can think, there has to be a one-way valve because if there isn't, it's going to go all the way up and get in, it's going to put some of the stuff in and it's going to travel right back down, it's going to fill the bowl all the way up again. Well that's what's exactly what's happening. So every time we come to see the boat, this bowl is like two-thirds or three-quarters of the way full with some really nasty kind of smelly stuff. So this whole potty is getting really stinky in here. Taking a look at the schematics of this thing and I think that the valve I'm looking for is right here where the hose comes out. This is the drain hose, the out hose, and behind it is one of these things. This is called, funny enough, called a, a joker valve. See, funny and see what I did with that? It's, it's a one-way valve and it can open up and flow this way, but then when it closes, in theory, it's supposed to create a watertight seal. And I have a sneaky suspicion that the one that's down here is all crudded up and not working. So we've bought a new one. They're not particularly expensive. And this next project is going to be to try, I'm not sure how, to get behind in here, get this whole hose off, get the whole thing out, get to this joker valve, replace it, and put it all back together. Yeah, I've never done this before it ought to be interesting we have something to put the water in like I see that you have a bucket up here yeah that's a good point what I've done already is to hose. clean out the bowl obviously if the one-way valve is bad there's not a lot of water in the hose can't be because it'd be in the bowl so what I've done is taken a sponge and it smells fun in here I cleaned everything out stuck the sponge down as deep in there as I could and sort of bailed out the potty that way there shouldn't be much water when I take this off the bottom here yeah there's probably gonna to be something I've got this guy can lay down over here and try and get some of the water I think it's just gonna make a mess and I don't know if there's much way we can get around that I have this little bowl as well in a sponge I'm kind of ready but I think it's gonna kind of make a stinky mess I've been looking at this this is where we need to be. This hose has actually been replaced. That's not an original hose from Fountain Peugeot. So somebody's already addressed this at some point. You can kind of see there's three screws here. It's one there, one there, and one on the other side there. I think that our little joker valve here, this guy here, is sitting inside this housing, maybe back behind this, this plate. That's the hope. But I think I have to take those hose clamps off, these guys here, because they, it's going to be really hard to get a screwdriver in there, actually, to get those things out. So, I don't know. Maybe I can? I don't know. We'll have to see. But I'm going to have to fuss with it and see if I can get those screws out. These screws are a little hard to get to. We'll get this one off. Really not the right size screwdriver for this head, but it's the right length. Let's see if we can get this one loose. Oh my gosh, pretty tight. Okay, so that third one down there, this one down here, so that is going to be a thing. I can't even see it. Uh, I wonder if I'm going to take the whole stupid hose off just because of that one screw. Um, it looks like they silicone this. See that? Look at that. Oh my god. Because it was probably leaking. It's not the way you fix a leak. Ridiculous. Oh, we got some water leaking out. That's fun. Well, let's see if we can get this off. No. I've already taken the screws out, so now it's like not very strong. I'm afraid I'm going to break it. And it's leaking, which is fine. Can you even see it? Ah, there it goes. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, Heidi bought me a slightly smaller screwdriver, and it seems like that did the trick. So it's like literally only half a centimeter shorter, but it seems to have done the trick. All right. That's all three. We pull this out. We're going to make a mess. Oh, we can pull this cover off too. I think this cover just pops up. There. Okay, it's going to hang out back there, but it's up. Let's pull this out and see what we got. There's our joker valve. Yay. Oh, nice. Okay, so there's some, there's some Schmitz water. That's fun. 
Uh, ick. Oh, gross. Gross, 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 gross. So this is the old one here. And you can see it just wasn't closing. It's pretty deformed. Looks a little weird down there. This is the new one. So got high hopes for this new one. Hopefully it will fix our problem. Let me go ahead and clean back here. There's some, there's some hair. That's fun. Not my hair. Somebody else's hair. Probably the same species, but we're not even sure of that. Yeah, that's nice. It's interesting. I, I know this is great fun, but looking inside here, there's obviously some black smuts. It's a toilet, right? But what I'm not seeing is a ton of scaling in here. And what I've heard is that the, the uretic, uretic acid from Wizzadoodles will actually kind of get form these crusties all over the place. These calcium deposits everywhere. And they're yellow kind of crystals and they just sort of lock up all of these systems. They, they can do everything, screw up your macerator, screw up your, your joker valves, and they can plate the inside of these tubes as well and really clog them up quite a bit. So I just pulled this out of the center of that tube. So that's more silicone, isn't it? I mean, Trash. I'm not sure what that was supposed to do. So anyway, we're gonna throw that okay. out. All right. Great fun. We can see I'm a little grossed out by this, but I have high hopes. Okay, great. I'm pretty certain the joker valve goes in there because it's a one-way valve, right? So it's got to go out through there, out the thing. So you don't want to put it in backwards. I don't think you could put it in backwards. Anyways, I'm going to throw a little silicone paste on here as well, just to make sure we get a good seal on everything. I'm assuming, oh, this must be the gasket that seals it. Okay, gotcha. Because I was wondering, actually, you know, what seals this surface against this surface back here? At any rate, so what does seal it is the joker valve itself. So let's throw a little bit of this little love here, a little silicone paste love on the joker valve, the back and the front of the joker valve so we get a good seal. You don't need a lot, just a little kiss, not a ton. I'm a huge fan of this stuff though. See how this does not stick at all? At all, right? Just peels right up. So this is no <laughs> good, it's just no good at all. All right, we'll go ahead and put our joker valve in. In other words, silicone is not the correct use for this. Here. No, it is not. That's the way I think it should go, is like that. I think this hose, though, boy, that's a really tight bend. Let's get this out of here. So since we've got a little bend on there, we can kind of think about how we'd mount this. It won't go that way. It will go that way, sort of. And it will definitely go that way. So I guess it's got to go on like that. All right. Get our screws back in, get our hose up out of the way. Let's get this guy screwed in. I'm going to give this a try because this is just such cramped quarters in here. It's really difficult to, to get a screwdriver in there that's the right size. All right, one more. The infamous bottom screw. I can't even see it really, to be, to be honest. It's kind of the braille method back there. Okay, that one's seated. Okay, there we go. All right, that's it. It's in, all three are seated. We've got our hose here. Gotta get that back on. Pull our hose clamps a little further forwards. So they're ready to go. Want that lovely silicone, which didn't stick to anything. Okay, that's on. Oh, you know what we have to think about is this cover. This cover here, I gotta get the cover back on. It came off easily when the hose was out. So we can get it back on without a huge fuss. Okay, that comes forward. Yeah, like that. There we go. Okay. Right, that's our cover. I just want to be careful of that because in case we couldn't get the cover back on, I have to take this all apart again. That would be a bummer. And I always use nut drivers when I are working with these clamps. A thousand times easier than a dumb screwdriver. And you get a lot more torque. It's kind of cool that they put two on here though. It's always for hoses below the water line. And I guess they just didn't want poo coming back through here. So probably a good thing be off here we are we're off the thing so that's no good all right that's not working this one's got to go in further it was right at the edge there okay good it's got up a little bit and it is absolutely close as possible there we go all right that looks pretty good all right nice and tight yeah it feels really good actually it's on there little bits of silicone everywhere huh all right all right so moment of truth let's go ahead and flush this thing see how we do we need some water first oh that's the pump we need a little bit of water there we go, we got a little water coming in. Throw this guy back out again. And before we go too much further, let's go ahead and check for leaks down here to be certain we're good. Looks really good down there. Gosh, look at all those little bits of silicone everywhere. That stuff just everywhere, huh? Not cool. All right, that feels good. Now I don't really know if there's even water in there yet. There must be, I guess. 
Let's go ahead and flush this and see what we got. Certainly looks a lot better. Okay, that's about normal for the water level. At least normal for the other toilets at least. That looks good. Well, will we need to wait until sometime this week to see what's going on with that? Yeah, we will. We'll check this. We have to move the boat on Wednesday. So it usually goes down in about 24 hours. And we'll go ahead and check it next Wednesday and see where it is. It looks good. It looks clean. Smell. I don't smell any nasty smell anymore either, so it no. smells a lot better. Yep. It smells a lot better. I'm looking back here for leaks and I don't see any back here. It's totally dry, so we're good there. Everything seems good. I'm going to call this a success. Now the other toilet on the other side I think is doing the same thing, so we'll go check that one out. And we bought two of those joker valves, so we'll go ahead and replace the joker valve. Might as well just replace it. It really wasn't that bad. I thought it was going to be absolutely crazy, but it wasn't all that <laughs> bad actually. To change it out now it's funny it's just a funny name um, yeah. so for this particular Jabsco potty the part number that you need for this is 44106-1000 so that's that's this mm -hmm. number right here that's the correct size for this Jabsco makes a bunch of these toilets and things but I was able to find our exact model well we got the last two otherwise we yeah. probably would have grabbed a couple of Right. We, to have yes, in to have in ship store. Stores, Absolutely. Yeah. Right now we're not going to have any spares. Well, we can order some more. So we're going to go ahead and install the other one, and we'll order a few more for spares. It was because, definitely the right one. Yeah, it fit perfectly. It was exactly the right one. So we're all set there. We are all familiar with this. When you're in a house or an apartment or a condo, you usually don't think about what happens after you flush. But what happens to all the poo when you use a boat head? Unless you are more than three miles offshore, pump outs are part of cruising life. And let me show you what that looks like. Today is kind of a stinky job. We are getting the heads pumped out. So when we are in a marina and we are on our boat, we have heads. And when we use the heads, they eventually get filled up. And so I'm gonna show you what the process is to get something called a pump out done. So this is Chase. What is your title at the marina? I'm a dock in. I'm just one of the more senior dock ins. Yeah. Okay. Chase was explaining the process and I'm going to actually make him explain it again. We have a cart that we have the pump on. We'll pull the pump out here, plug it into any power. If it's a stationary unit, it does not need that. But for ours, we do need it. We just plug it into a straight 30 amp. Pretty simple. We have them on the docks everywhere. Otherwise, what we usually do is that we pull the line to the boat, turn on the power so the pump will start building pressure. Place the nozzle on the waste tank, let it build pressure for a second, then open it. And so what that does is that a lot of times there's stuff stuck or maybe it's clumpy or whatever it might be might need a little bit of convincing to come out that'll get it to come out immediately and then you hold it there there's a clear ball on the hose itself and as it's going through you, it'll be flowing and if it's flowing that ball will be completely full so if that ball's completely full you're flowing it might be a couple of gallons every 30 seconds every minute i don't know the rate but it's pretty quick otherwise it's not flowing so if the tank's getting lower what will happen is that the ball will be maybe a quarter full. You will still see some substance moving, but it's not going to be completely full and it's not going to be pulling much at all. So what we do at that moment, that means the tank's low, we'll close the, uh, the nozzle, let it build pressure for a second, open it up, and it will cause a vacuum and it will come up really quick. Mm -hmm. um, it's called popping it. Make sure you're holding it securely. Um, but it's, <laughs> we'll do that a few times. It also helps getting the stuff uh, off the bottom of the tank because it's very difficult to get the veining. You know, there might be a half gallon, gallon left on the bottom. It helps getting that off. Then once we're done with that, the boat should be empty. If they have a second tank, we go to the second tank. Uh -huh. Otherwise, we'll toss our nozzle into the water, pump up a few gallons to get the all the waste out of our hose line, pack it up, and take it back to where we store our pump out cart. Cool. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. For doing pump outs and also to open our water tank and also our fuel tanks, we have this nifty little tool here. It's super helpful, but it's also the only one we have, so we have to be very careful to take good care of it. I just have the lids hand tightened, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around once we're done and we'll tighten them down with a special tool that I showed you earlier. and. I'm going to probably make sure that there's no debris on, on the deck and I'll wipe it up if there is any.
Thanks for watching our video on crap. A big thank you to our supporters on Patreon. Having fun? Uh, mm, I don't know about that. Join us in our next video when Franny installs a special faucet to help keep us from getting sick.